Okay, the Detroit Lions have been moving and grooving a little bit uh, in this offseason. We know that. I don't know why I started with such a cheesy way to say things. The Detroit Lions have been moving and grooving. Get out of here. Anyways, I am so sorry for that start to this. Um, hey, here's the deal. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday, maybe after Memorial Day Tuesday. Maybe it's Wednesday by the time you're seeing this. It's been a beautiful day uh, in Michigan uh, today uh, over on the west side here. I uh, spent all my time in the yard, had the day off work. So it was really nice to spend some time in the yard going to hit up uh, double date tomorrow with with my wife and Chris, the other guy here and his wife. We were talking about good places to eat. You got any big suggestions on the west side? Kind of that Spring Lake, Grand Haven, Holland, Muskegon, like along the, the west side. If you got a great Little known spot, tell us about it if you're from the west side. We like to think we know all the restaurants. But anyways, um, with that being said, the Detroit Lions have quietly signed a wide receiver that could be kind of a hidden answer for depth at wide receiver. I think when you look at our wide receiver room, you are confident in the front end of it when you're talking about St. Brown, when you're talking about Jamison Williams, and honestly, even with Kylie Raymond. I don't know if you're happy with Kylie Raymond being the third wide receiver, but you're very happy with him being there and producing. But then after that, there's question marks, okay? It's Antoine Green and Donovan Peoples-Jones. That's the two names that everybody's just like, okay, we're going to kind of mark them in. We know Maurice Alexander hasn't gotten it done so far. We know that Tom Kennedy is everybody's favorite um, practice squad player, right? Um Isaiah Williams is kind of the camp darling um, that everybody wants to be good. But when you look at him, he's 5'10", 180 pounds without elite speed. He's a good separator, but he does not have that elite speed. And same with uh, Jalen Calhoun out of Duke. So there's question marks. But there's a guy that I didn't even know was on this roster. Like, I missed it. How did I miss it? I do this. This is what I do. I cover the Lions every single day. And I totally missed it. And um, that guy is none other than, let me show you here, Trey Quan Smith. And I remember him playing for the Saints. And we're going to get in talking about who he hit, who he is, what he provides. We're going to get into some numbers. We're going to get into some measurables. And what I saw based on watching his tape, because I had to go watch the tape. All right, but basically what this article is saying is that, yep, you have St. Brown, you have Williams, but then after that, what are we doing? What, what are we going to do? And I don't think um, <laughs> I don't think Donovan Peoples-Jones made anybody more excited. Like, you want to talk about a guy who's fast but looks so slow? It doesn't make any sense. So here they signed this receiver who has 35 career starts and a two-touchdown game against Detroit, by the way, in his NFL resume. All right? He spent five seasons in New Orleans as a sometime starter who played over 66% of offensive snaps in his first four seasons. He was a third-round pick by the Saints in 2018 out of UCF after an impressive career as a deep threat with some savvy to his routes to his route running. Now, is he a deep threat? Sure. All right. He had 18, but this is a guy who comes in 131 catches, 18 touches or 18 tutties, 18 touchdowns. All right. It, it's very interesting. He has more total yards, more yards per reception, double the touchdowns than the man he's hoping to replace in Detroit, Josh Reynolds. He, then that's what Josh Reynolds did in his first five years. Okay, this is very interesting to me. So let's look at who he is. If you're a PFF person, all right, uh, the last time he played uh, in 2022, like any significant time, all right, he had 19 catches on 26 targets for 278 yards. And when you're watching the film of those 19 catches, almost exclusively out of the slot, really weird the way they chose to deploy him. Of course, that's what happens when you have Olave and, and Thomas playing with you. They get the outside reps. So is this a guy that could contribute for the Lions? Here's what I'll say about him. He has good enough speed, but he does kind of look like he's running on sand a little bit. He is not a hands catcher of the football. He catches the ball with his body. Think Marvin Jones, all right? Think Marvin Jones Jr. here. He is a body catcher. But here's the thing about that. It's a big body. He comes in at 6'2", 
210 pounds. He's not small. And when he gets the ball after the catch, he runs and finishes runs more like he's a tight end than a wide receiver. And I'm saying that as a compliment. What I'm saying is he's willing to put his shoulder down and run through people. All right. When you go back and look at what he was as an athlete coming out of the draft, it wasn't bad. You know, he had an elite explosion grade. In other words, he can jump and and that's what he can do, which only increases your radius to, to catch the ball. His speed was good. His size was good. His size has gotten even better. Now, what I noticed from tape absolutely showed on here, his agility is extremely poor. He has very stiff hips. So here's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Is he the next guy? Is he the guy to replace and be the fifth wide receiver on this team, or fourth, or whatever you want to say. Is he going to replace Donovan Peoples-Jones? Is he going to replace Antoine Green? And a lot of people think that this battle is with Antoine Green. And I'm here to tell you something entirely different. Antoine Green, coming out of North Carolina last year, got on the field more than I expected for a seventh-round pick. He got on the field more than I expected for a seventh-round pick. He really did. And when you look at the film and you go back to Carolina and you're watching Antoine Green, because that's what this video made me do, one of the things that I noticed was his hips weren't as stiff as Traquan Smith. All right? He has almost the exact same size. He's sitting at almost 6'2", 200 pounds, 10 pounds less. He is just as fast and has better agility. All right? And, and if you want to see what I'm talking about, the numbers back that up coming out his RAS was absolutely enough here's the biggest difference that I saw between the two um it was there were two differences and I and I'm going to tell you which one was better in each Antoine Green did I say Smith anyways Antoine Green was a, a much better catcher of the football with his hands um, even some one-handed grabs, like he just showed much softer hands than did uh, Traquan Smith. Now, Traquan Smith showed the ability to separate on his route a little bit better than Antoine Green. Had a little more wiggle, and by the way, it was a little bit better after the catch. So when you look at these guys, they do different things well. Neither one of them are going to blow you away with their athleticism. Neither did Josh Reynolds. You just need to find the guy who's going to understand the offense the best and go to it. And I think we forget this is a Dan Campbell connection. Dan Campbell was in the room coaching with this guy in his first two years in the NFL. He knows him. So there's a familiarity there. There's going to be a familiarity with the offense and what Ben Johnson's running, um, at least about half of it, I would assume. And so like, he's going to hit the ground running. My thing is that I don't think this is a competition between Traquan Smith and Donovan Peoples-Jones. Or, I'm sorry, and uh, I don't think it's a competition between Traquan Smith and um, Antoine Green. I think it's between Smith and Donovan Peoples-Jones. DPJ is on a one-year contract for a little over $2 million. Very easy to say, all right, we're done. We, we can be done with that one. That's the person he's competing with here. I think Antoine Green's in. And unless he has a really poor camp, but the amount that they played him last year, especially early in the year, tells me that he picked up on the system really quick. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think Traquan Smith is a guy who makes this team? Does he move the needle for you? Um, Josh Reynolds didn't move the needle for anybody when we picked him up halfway through year one of the uh, Dan Campbell era. And he ended up being a great receiver for us for two and a half years that did nothing but produce. This could be something similar. All right, thanks for watching. We want to be your go-to spot for Lions content, and we'll see you on the next one.